Hello, Greg. G'day, mate. How you going? Excellent. Yeah, well, this How's is the way. Oh, uh, yeah, all right. All right, not too bad. Probably wondering why I've got the clubs, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. You'll find out soon. Okay. It's a little bit weird with the English stuff on and all. But so I'll, like let it, it, I'll let it, no, well, I'll let it slide. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually, normally we do this interview in my man cave at home. Right. So I have traveled, don't want to put any pressure on you or anything, but I have traveled for this. So you have a man cave? Yeah, yeah. Do you invite anyone well, around or is it just sort of? No, it's for me. I'm the man. <laughs> yeah. For the purpose of this show, we're calling it a person cave because, you know, we're on like state broadcast. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Let's have a seat. Can I offer you a beer? I'd love a beer. Are you sure? Because you're sort of working and all. Is that what this is? Working? Isn't it? Well, well, I guess I'm technically working as well. Oh, it's on the state broadcaster. They won't mind. <laughs> That'd be fine. Yeah, we better, better pour, it into, pour it into that. Right. So it actually doesn't look like we're having a beer. I normally do this in the man cave at home. That's sort of sort of my ego room with all my memorabilia and stuff. So who are the big guests you've had? Oh, I've had our mate, John Key. Oh, yeah. JK. Yeah. Sir JK. Yeah, Sir JK. Yeah, bit of respect. How was he? I think he after asked you. Wanted to yeah. know. Oh, good. How are you doing? Good. Had some big players, actually. Not actually cricketers. Oh, right. I think you're the first cricketer. You don't like cricketers anymore? Or? <laughs> well, the show's called I Don't Like Cricket. Oh. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Which oh, I right. take it fairly literally. Yeah, no, I've had all sorts of people, actually, from walks of life. Just people who are like, yeah, have a passing interest in the game. Yeah. But have an interesting story. Yeah. Whereas you've got a very much a sort of a, a big story in the game of cricket. It's been good to you, eh, cricket? Cricket? Yeah. It's given me everything, Rick. Mm. Uh, coming from South Dunedin to... Now coaching England, it's quite a journey, isn't it? Met well, some good people along the way. Well, not only that. I mean, didn't you didn't you give like the the Calgary lecture? Mm. Like that's probably one of the biggest honours in cricket. It is actually. When you look at the, some yeah. of the people that have given it, it was huge. And you're an interesting character because you don't probably see yourself as a celebrity or anything like that. No. But you like the swanky part of life. <laughs> I mean, you've got to admit, you do like the swanky times. A great friend of mine, Kyle Mills, said it's a great skill in life to be able to walk into the local TAB bar down in South Dunedin and have a pint with the locals yep. and punt on, yep. on the horses run around at Forbury Park and also the next day to be able to rock into a black tie event and drink champagne and smoke yeah. cigars with the hoity toity. That's what I was getting to because you're just as comfortable and enjoy going down the southern, having a having a jug and playing the pokies. Yeah, too right. Yeah, yeah with, with your mates. Yeah. I love that sort of aspect of it, but I do enjoy some of the nice things in life as well, like lovely golf courses. I hear these English guys are actually improving your golf. They are. They are. They're so good at golf. Was that the deal when you were doing the contracts? Okay, well, I'll turn you guys into good cricketers. You you turn me into a good golfer. (laughs) I didn't realise they were that good at golf. I didn't realise... I knew they were good at cricket. I didn't realise they were as good as what they are. Cricket can be a stuffy place, eh? Mm. And these guys, especially England, are under immense pressure. They get so much stick from the media. So that, that whole part of it, having a coach who's going to actually get them out on the golf course is probably good for English cricket, isn't it? Well, I think so. I think I guess that was the appeal of maybe when Rob Key decided he, that I was the right man for the job. I guess that was part of it. It doesn't mean that my way is right at all, but it was different and it was a fresh approach yeah. and they wanted change and they had a thirst to do things in a different way and hence I landed in the job and sort of always felt in my life that you're not always going to be the perfect fit for different jobs or different people or yeah. different organisations, but you've got to be authentic to how you do things. So, yeah. so I was always going to try and do it kind of the way that gives me the most amount of satisfaction, also um, the way that I think is right for these guys. You've had an amazing amount of success as a coach. It's early doors, though, isn't it? It's not... I haven't, oh, no, I'd retire now. <laughs> so I was yeah, I've thought about that a few yeah. times. But I don't know if what I do is really coaching, though. Really. What do you do? Honestly, I don't do a great deal. I sort of stay out of the way as much as I can and try and take things out rather than put things in. Just if you're going to do a job and you're going to pour your heart and soul into it and you dreamt of doing that job when you were a kid, why would you not want to enjoy it while you're doing it rather than waiting until the minute that you've finished to then go, yeah. oh, that was fun, now I can enjoy myself? That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I thought one thing you did with the Black Caps was you, you gave them a, an opportunity to play without fear. Is that a fair assumption? I like to think that that was the idea. Um, I think it's very different when you're coaching to playing. I think when yeah. it's captaining, it's a bit more of a, come on, let's go. Uh, I'll go over the wall as well and let's, yeah. let's see where we land. And, and you can be a bit more bolshy and, and brave, um, sometimes stupid as well. but. But that's kind of what you have to do. And you, you almost sacrifice your own statistics and career, which is a good thing, I think, because you're sending messages to your group that it's okay if we, we head this way. Yeah. As a coach, 
you're not out there with them, so your messages need to be very consistent, very succinct, and and quite deliberate in in the language that you're using around that freedom and that yeah that stripping away a lot of the noise. I think you know the media, the fear of failure, the repercussions if it doesn't come right, all the things which stymie talent. Yeah, and, and try and take all that away, and then hopefully talent is able to flourish and then guys realize how good they can be and that becomes a self-fulfilling kind of drug in itself i guess did you learn that through your own experiences i think back to when you were a younger player when you as a youngster because mm. i played at the same club when you were a kid yeah. playing with a tennis ball on the side but you can't i always remember you came into the otago side and you came out to bat uh i was at the other end obviously on a few you <laughs> you you came in probably seven or eight we could keep a batsman and first three balls, and the first ball nearly blew your front pad off. Who were we playing? I think we were playing Wellington. They had a couple of relatively quick bowlers. It might have been CD. Oh, yeah. Playing for Otago. CD, yeah. Anyway, you get hit in front, first ball, get away with it. I thought it was out, by yeah. the way, just for the record. Uh, I think you get beaten outside off stump twice, and you survive the over. Mm -hmm. You missed the first three balls. You came down to me, and I said, you are right, mate? You know, thinking you'd be nervous. Mm -hmm. And you, you and your I'll use your terminology. Oh, um, he said, "Yeah, mate, I'm fine. I, I just, I just can't wait till I'm degrading these." People. <laughs> and so I'm no, thinking, say that. "Yeah, yeah." And I'm thinking, oh, wow. "Bloody hell, I'm just, I can't wait to see if you make it through the next <laughs> over." But, but this is, and, and I used to think, is that arrogance or is that confidence? Like, what was it? Because it wasn't long before you were degrading those guys. I honestly don't know, Rick. I, well, I don't think I was a great player by any stretch of the imagination, but I think I had great moments. I can only attribute those great moments to that same mentality that it's OK if you fail or OK if something doesn't work out. Yeah. But on my day, I'm going to get you. And and when yeah. I do get you, it's going to be worth watching. I'm going to get you good. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. so there was almost, there's no real room for negativity in that mindset, I think. it's Yeah. And there's no benefit from negativity in it either. Look, um, it took a long time to win New Zealand over with that mindset, though, eh? Yeah, and, and some would say I still haven't, and I, and I never will. Oh, you um, have. Because <laughs> there was a time, it didn't matter what you did, they just get stuck into you. Yeah. And then, I, and then just through sheer brilliance of performance, I think you reversed it. Like, they were prepared to overlook the, the ugly outs because there was a 300, or there was an amazing T20 innings. Yeah, I think I was fortunate I probably played long enough as well where you get to that stage where you... It's not that you don't care anymore, but it's like, I'm going to go out every day could be my last game, and I'm going to go out and play how I loved to see the game played when I was a kid. So when I started playing, what was the style that I wanted to play, and who were my heroes? Viv Richards was one of my yeah, heroes. Yeah. And you wanted to buy a ticket to watch him play, regardless of whether he failed or succeeded. It was it was a must-buy. And, and so at the end of my career, I was lucky that I went through that initial phases to then go, bugger it, I'm going to play like that and, and see see yeah. how we go. Mine's actually a story when they were they were developing fighter planes. In the early stages of the design of the plane, we're going to a, a, a spin yeah. and, and all, the, all the pilots are pulling back on the stick, pulling back, pulling back, because you're spinning into the ground. And many of them lost their lives. And it was just one bloke who went, oh, bugger it, and just went forward on the stick. Boom, plane came out of the dive. Yeah? Yeah. I never You'd heard. be the bloke pushing forward on the stick, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know. I've got no idea, but I like the story. It's a, <laughs> it's a great story. Have you made that up, or is that actually? No, no. That, I heard it from someone, and you know, over I the like years. That. That's yeah. good. Can I use that at some stage? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're effectively now coach in England. Yeah. Well, I'd be. Yeah, but I'd be pulling back on the stick. Maybe as a player, but maybe as a coach, right? Yeah, true. You'd be encouraging to push forward. Well, you on learn. The stick. You learn from your journey, don't you? And, you? and you hope you can share it with others. Yeah. Do you reckon you could have made me play without fear? Is there room for someone like me in your team? Uh, <laughs> this is a difficult answer, isn't it? I think, I I think there's, there's, de here. there's definitely room for someone like you, Rick, because you... No, I you, mean as a player. Yeah, but you yeah. turn yourself into that type of player. You had a more expensive game than that, but you chose to be the discipline. Like yeah. You identified what New Zealand needed at the time, yeah. and you played that role, and you were going to yeah. play it till, you know... the so end it destroyed of, me mentally, yes. But there was an expression at player in there. Not everyone can go out and hit fours and sixes, and, and that's OK. It's like there needs to be some craft in amongst the flair as well. And yeah. I guess one thing we always talk about is, like, as a batting group, is when to understand to absorb pressure and, yeah. when, and then identify when the moment is to be able to turn pressure back on the opposition and be courageous enough to do so. And that would be the only thing, I guess, if I was coaching you, Rig, I'd say is, is there a stage that you can turn it back on them? Because you could, yeah. and when you did, you'd, 
you were good at it. I do remember that. I think I read my press too much, and like all of a sudden you'd be in in an oh. innings, and you'd be whacking it, and you'd go, "Hold on, that's not me." <laughs> oh, I better go back and block it. Yeah, I think it's better when you're in charge, because that's when people ask me what Brendan McCullum's like, I and. I say, well, he's a guy who believes that he, if he's in a role to steer the ship, if he's if he's in charge, things are going to be better. I like captaincy. I like leadership. I think I don't think it's for everyone. Um, and I've captained teams where we were poor, and I've coached teams where we weren't great either. Yeah. Um, but I love that. That's, I just love seeing growth in people. Honestly, I love I love seeing guys realise their potential, and and you can do that as a leader because you can influence them in the environment and control the messaging, and the same with, with coaching. So player, coach, commentator, wh what do you enjoy the most? Coaching, to be yeah. honest, yeah. It's, well, first of all, you, well, you don't have to play. <laughs> so, you, get, you must get nervous. I don't get nervous, no. Really? Uh, no, I don't get nervous at all. Well, I, I don't mind, like, for me, winning and losing is kind of irrelevant. I know we get judged on it, but if we get beat playing how we want to play, it's no problems. It's, yeah. all, all I care about is that we remain consistent with what we're trying to achieve and we continue to develop as players and as people in the environment is the most important yeah. thing. If we keep bringing that to the table and someone's better than us, no problems. There's got to be a fine line between stubbornly sticking to the plan that's probably the wrong plan. Well, I think in the coaching world you don't have enough time to be able to then change plan because you yeah. get fired anyway. So <laughs> what I also love is understand your own mortality in a job. It's, yeah. There's two types of coaches, right? The coach has been sacked and the one who's waiting to be sacked. So once you understand yeah. that mortality and you're not trying to protect anything, then yeah. you just do it how you think it's right. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, it's, that's okay. Got some questions from Spark Sport fans. All right. I don't know if they're fans of you or the fans of Spark Sport. I I'm going to go with the fans of Spark Sport. I thought Grant Elliott was the question <laughs> asker. Inside Elliott? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's your bicep routine? <laughs> Is that from Grant Elliott? I think this could be from Grant Elliott, <laughs> yes. Normally it involves sort of going like that. Oh, yeah. There. But you used to do a lot of weights as a... You had a good theory as you get older, eh? What? Big briskets. Yeah. <laughs> hides, hides the beer belly, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, if there was one player from any of the current international teams you could bring into the English team, who would it be and why? It's a good question, Ooh, man. That's a, good question. a lot of good cricketers around. Don't, don't say an Australian. There's no way I'm going to say an Australian. I mean, it's hard because where do they fit within the side and... Yeah, do you need an opener? Do you, do you need an These opener? guys are quite good. <laughs> <laughs> this, these guys are quite good. Got I always hated when we're playing, everyone would always talk about other teams and wanting these players. We don't have the depth here, we haven't got the... That used to annoy me with the Australians. Yeah. Like, everyone seemed to think, because they were the greatest team playing, well, when yeah, we played yeah, together. Easily. And there was always this attitude that everyone wants to be part of Who would get into their team? Yeah. I don't want to get in a team, I want to be a black cap. Yeah. I don't want to be green, I want a black cap. Yeah. Do my head in. They got paid well, though. You would have loved that. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I perhaps could have overlooked my morals <laughs> for a few more bucks. You know me well, don't you? <laughs> Is it true that you were better at rugby than Dan Carter at school? It's true that I played in front of him at one stage, but that didn't mean I was better than him. Yeah. It just means the selectors were completely <laughs> bonkers. Rubbish selectors. Yeah, but it's still a great story, isn't it? If it you could have made it any other sport, what would it have been then? Uh, I don't think I even would have made it at rugby. I would have certainly had a crack, but I was never going to be bigger. But, but you can be Brendan McCullum, but not in cricket, but in any other sport, what would it be? Um, well, rugby would have been. Oh, golf be. probably now, sorry. Golf. Yeah, yeah, golf. It'd be surfing for me. You'd love to surf for me. Yeah. And I'm not very good at it either. You must be right for you to enjoy it as much as what you do. Yeah, but it's it's nice having that thing that you're not good at when we're so good at everything. All the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been fantastic speaking with you, Brendan. Great you seeing too, you again. A um, little bit awkward, you've been the coach of England and all, with the test matches, but all the best, Thank sort you. of. Yeah, missing Thank you in the commentary box, actually. Yeah, I miss the boys and the girls up in the commentary box as well. We had a good time, didn't we? We had a good thing going. And... I thought when um, when you left, the fun would go, but it hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> We're still having fun. <laughs> That's good. That's how it should be. <laughs> the other major love in your life, uh, horses. Yeah. Um, horse breeding. I don't think you, you're actually not breeding any longer, are you? So I'll tell you why I love the horse game, because it slows me down a little bit. It takes time and it and you've got to be patient. And, yeah. and I love how that sort of slows me down a touch because I have a tendency to want to go now, you know? Yeah. Um, horse breeding, too slow, way too slow. Because you've got to buy the mare, then you've got to get the mare and foal, then you've got to yeah. fold the mare down, then you've got to put her back and foal. And, and it's also bloody expensive. <laughs> so, yeah. But also, I don't, it's, like, I like it and I enjoy it, 
but the racing is what gives me the great satisfaction and the animal. If you were like, you're a bit buff to be a jockey, you know? Fat. I think the word is buff. <laughs> <laughs> it's very kind of you, right? Would you stick yourself, like, would you stick Brendan McCullum as a player on one of your horses? Well, if I hadn't made it a cricket, I may have had no other option. And I might have had to venture down that path, and that would have really upset my friends at the Southern Tavern or, or the local watering hole. But sometimes I love the, the competition of what the, the jockeys have, the camaraderie that they have amongst them as well. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't have the discipline for it. See, now it's your dough on the line, and you, you see unpredictable go for a gap that's not there, Brendan McCullum. Riding your horse. <laughs> now I finally found something to make you question yourself, haven't I? <laughs> uh.